It may be a bye week for the Bison, but the university is warning no parking areas will be enforced come the next game. Bison fans won't get a second chance if they park in a restricted area for tailgating. This comes after more than 100 people parked in restricted spots at last weekend's game. But fans say no parking signs were nowhere to be seen. Thank you for joining us. I'm Krista Bame. Multiple people called our whistleblower hotline and one was denied a parking ticket appeal by NDSU. Valley News Team's Macy Anger joins us tonight with more on how you can avoid this with a full day of tailgating to begin next week. Macy? Krista, NDSU says they waived or refunded all 111 parking tickets issued to drivers in that area. Officials say last weekend signs had been posted west of 18th Street, but if drivers came down Centennial Boulevard, they would not have seen it. That changed this week. All along 18th Street, signs have been posted every block and down each gravel road. Signs clearly state no parking in agriculture plots. That is where hundreds of fans parked last Saturday and got tickets. In a statement, the university said NDSU uses the field plots for extensive agriculture research and motor vehicle traffic can cause serious disruption to this research, resulting in damage to the projects. For future games, NDSU says drivers can park in any lot south of 17th Avenue. Parking is free to the public. Krista? All right, thank you, Macy. With so many looking for a spot to park, we also reached out to the Fargo Dome to see if tailgating could be expanded for fans in any way. The Dome says it's at full capacity in the lots, and that's why it's first come, first serve. And to our weather, fall is a bit in the air now, and it feels good for your weekend. Let's check in with meteorologist Robert Hahn. Robert? It's going to feel more fall-like as we head through the rest of this week, but right now a bit summery out there. Lots of sunshine, some windy and warm conditions and temperatures have warmed into the 80s in many locations, including here in the Fargo-Moorhead area. 82 degrees. It's also 82 up in Grand Forks. 80 in Sisseton. 80 in Jamestown. A little cooler off towards the east. Some low 70s, Bemidji and Wadena. It's been a windy one out there, and we're going to continue to see those breezy conditions. Peak winds so far, 32 miles per hour here in Fargo, but 43 miles per hour in Jamestown and Langdon. It's in these areas off towards the north and the northwest that we do have a wind advisory that goes in effect or stays in effect until 7 o'clock for winds gusting as high as 45. Just a few clouds out there, no precipitation out there. And as we hit through the rest of the evening here in Fargo, a breezy and warm one with temperatures falling through the 70s into the mid 70s by 8 o'clock and some low 70s by 9 o'clock. Tomorrow we do have a bit of rain and we also have an eclipse to talk about. Do we have a good chance of seeing it? We'll let you know coming up in just a few minutes. Several area schools in Fargo and Grand Forks failed to make yearly progress in standards set by the state of North Dakota and the federal government. The state released detailed information on the failing Title I schools. Overall, 119 school districts in the state were identified as not making adequate yearly progress, including Fargo, West Fargo, and Grand Forks school districts. All three districts have not made adequate yearly progress for five years in a row and are now at a year five performance improvement plan, which includes measures for corrective action and alternative governance. 151 schools across the state failed to meet adequate yearly progress, including six in Fargo, three in West Fargo, and six in Grand Forks. We have a full list of these schools on our website. Just go to valleynewslive.com and click on this story. A Fargo man was arrested after an argument in a Walmart parking lot last night. Fargo police said 26-year-old Michael Okins approached a group standing outside the South Walmart and an argument started. Okins eventually went back inside his pickup and backed into one of the men in the group and drove off. A witness saw a license plate which helped police track the vehicle down an hour later. The man was treated at a hospital for non-life-threatening injuries while Okins is being charged with reckless endangerment. And still to come tonight, Sandy's Donuts sprinkles a bit of Dragon Pride for game day. Just a few clouds out there, and we'll see a few more clouds as we head through the evening hours. Tomorrow, a touch of rain and an eclipse. We'll have all your forecast details coming up right after this.